Oh, hello and welcome to the last part where I'll be show you how you can make the particles. So in this video I will show you how you can make this lightning effect around the core and I will also show you how you can do these smoke and fog effects. We're gonna start with the lightning. So open Houdini. First of all you need to install the lab tools. In Houdini 18 the game tools have renamed to lab tools so you have to search now for labs in here. So you search for them and you click here on update to get the latest version. So once you have the latest version, this will also include some tools we're going to use for the lightning. So to demonstrate the lightning tool, we're going to just start out with a sphere. And on this sphere, I'm going to type in lightning and we have here a lightning tool. So by default, it will create something here. But of course, we want to control it more. So in here, I will select a start and end point. So this is where this, the lightning starts. And then this is where the lightning strikes are going to end. So if I click a starting point, oh, I forgot one small thing here, is that this should be in polygon. So that should work better, of course, to work with polygons. So here again, I'm going to click on the start. Going to click a point so we can for example, here on top, and the end point will be, for example, the point at the bottom. So now we will go from the start point to the end point. So as you can see, our sphere, they are creating these shapes around them. Now we have also more settings here, like you can control the spread of these points. So we have a spread control around the start and at the end. And there's also a small debug mode. So in here, if I look at the debug of the end, in this red area, these are all the possibilities where the lightning should end. So you can see that the start is here orange, and this will also here end in one point. And compared to here, we have a bigger spread. So if I increase this, you see that the lightning beams are getting farther from each other. So you can use this to get a bit more randomness going on and to get the lightning a bit more everywhere around the model. You can also have here then some relaxing if you want that. And of course here we have also the amount of strikes. So in here I have five. So if you want more, you can of course have more. And you could also do the same here, like you can spread this part. So the beginning is a bit more random and not perfectly one point. So if you want that, you can choose that as well. But I like it to have one point, for example. So then we have some shape controls. So of course, this is a ramp that controls the shape. And we have some overall thickness, the columns, the quality of the line, like you can see. We can make it quite low poly or we can fine tune it more and then it will get a little bit more noisy. You can also blast the shapes a bit away from the model, as you can see. You can also control how far it's going. And you can also push off the end points. Like maybe the end is falling off, as you can see here. And we also have information for vertex color. We also have here a noise tab. And then in here we can we can go a little bit more extreme on the noises as you can see. So if you want to have, for example, more this look, a bit more extreme, you can have that also. One useful thing also here is the clipping. And with the clipping, I can make sure that my lightning is not intersecting too much with my model. So if I increase the clipping, you can see we can sort of push a bit this out of the model so this is quite useful setting the clipping to push away back the to push back the shape a bit then we also have some preview modes here so we can for example show input and i can color it blue just for visualization and we also have some preview modes like we have uving so this is automatically also unwrapped from 0 to 1. If I go here, 
you can see this is automatically being EV'd from the 0 to 1 range. So if you want to overlay a texture on it, you can do that as well. And there is also an animation preview. And this one works best. So you just have to press play and the animation should play. So this is the result of what I'm having now. So we'll go over each individual model and th this will create like the lightning effect. So this will be the same effect that we'll be creating in the shader, which will also, based on the vertex color, show each individual model. So in here I will do a bit more manually, so you can see that one by one it's showing the model and it creates this lightning effect. And also here we have an option to instantly save this to an FBX. So that's also nice to have. And we can also use the other inputs. So this is a custom beginning point and a custom end point. So if you want to, for example, we can do use an add node and enable this one. So this add node has now created a point I can move, as you can see. And we can use this as, for example, a custom, uh, custom begin point. And you can see it's instantly going here. So if I move my point, you will see that the lightning is automatically now being recalculated to the new point. But now let's say I want to use my core model to create the lightning effect. You can load in our model and we can you do that by the file node. So with the file nodes, we can in here fill in the path to our FBX. So I did that right here. I just looked in my Unity projects and got the core model. So this is here then my core model and let's also place down the lightning tool and of course we have to fill in some proper values so so let's say i want to have some lightning everywhere so i'm just going to select a point at the top and i will also select a point at the bottom and then we just increase the spreading and then we have a bit lightning everywhere and i'm also going to go to preview modes and i will show input for now so i can clearly see what's going on and I'm also going to color this blue, just pure, just for visualization. So first of all, maybe we need more of them. So I'm going to add 10 and let's increase here the spread of the end points. And then we have this going on. So that's already looking pretty good. We can also play around with the spread of the beginning. Maybe that will be interesting. That can also be interesting. You can see it's a, like a, a bit more random now. So if I would keep this on zero, you can clearly see that they are coming from one point to the end. But if I would go here, we can see that it's a bit more random and we can also debug this version. So yeah, based on what you want, you can then specify the spreading numbers. So in my case, for if you want to have something similar here, I took something a bit more random. Like you can also see here that there is not a specific starting point or end point. It just goes a little bit random. So that would be a similar effect you would be having. And I might go to, I think, 15 to create interesting shapes. So if you're happy with the base setups, you can we can go here to the noise then and start tweaking these noises. So if you want to go more extreme on the lightning, like this, like I increased, I increased some values. And again here, we can do the clipping here just so I don't have too much intersections and I have a, some control of the noise. You can also here at the bottom add jitter. So this will be like some little bit more finer distortion. So, so let's say you're happy with this model and we want to export this. Then we can here give it the proper name. So by default, it's called lightning strikes one. So if you're happy with this name, you can keep it. 
and I choose to directly save it into a Unity project. So, so here in Unity, I have now the model, as you can see here. Let's drag this in the scene, and note that it's super small. So either scale it in Houdini, or we can go here and set the scale factor to a 100 and apply. Then I have the model here. So note that we have stored information in the vertex color, and we're going to use that to loop on the model. So let's look at a shader to do this. So here I'm going to create a graph shader. So I will create shaders, a, a, a graph. I'm going to create a graph called lightning strikes. This is then my graph. And I'm also going here to the properties. I'm going to set it to a additive mode. So like I mentioned before, we stored information in the vertex color. So I will be loading in the vertex node. So vertex color node. So this gets the information from our current model. Then I want to split this information. So we have control over each channel. So RGB. Because also here in the lightning tool, there are options to store different information. So if I disable the previews here for a moment, I can go here and, for example, change this to a random number. So that means each line has a random number from 0 to 1, of course. And also there is a gradient. So if you are looking for a gradient effect, so if, if you put them all to gradient, you will see them in grayscale. So you can choose what is stored in the vertex color. So either it's uh, by order, so this is the default, a random number, or a gradient. Then you can use this further in shader to get some more variations. So back here in the shader. So now I have my vertex color. Then I want to have the time, because we need the time to loop over each different color. And I will create a modulo on the time. Then I want to multiply. This is the speed. And then I'm going to use the step node. Step node. And our edge value here is our red channel. And I want to connect this then over here. So we have this result then, and I'm going to copy the steps and I'm going to do the same here, but instead of connecting these two, I want to first do a subtraction and I'm going to fill in here a lower value like 0 0.01 and connect this then here. And then these two steps, I'm going to subtract them. And let's connect this then to our color. So let's already test out this shader. So I'm going to click save. I'm going to put this on the side. I'm going to create a material. And in here, in the top, let's change this to our shader. So lightning strikes. And let's place this on my model. And it's not working at the moment. So I made a small mistake. I put it here in position. Of course, we shouldn't put this in position. This should be in color. And save. And now we have some interesting results. So let's also put this in alpha. And save this again. And now you can see that they are like changing what's showed by these values. I'm also going to make some properties here so I can actually control how fast it is going and so on. So first of all, I want to create a vector one called speed and default value one, drag the speed in here and connect it over here at the multiply. 
then I have another value, then another value that is also a vector 1, and I'm gonna call this play range, and I'm gonna go to the value 1, and place this as here as well. So click save. So now we have some values here that we can play with. So let's lower the play range first of all, let's say 0 0.1. And now we are seeing more individual lines. This is sort of the range on the vertex number. And then we can, for example, hear the speed, like it goes super fast. So, so this can make interesting results. And I also want to make some interesting glowing colors. So we have our base logic for the system. And now I can create in some colors and I will be using a lerp over here and then I can use this as, as my lerping value then you can use a texture or just a color and I'm gonna set the color to HDR that's because we can here get the intensity and we can make it a certain color and put this in the color save and this was way too much and instead of going constantly back and forward i'm gonna right click and convert this to a property so i have also here a color parameter and now we can get these lightnings and here i put them together so i put the core and the lightning together so then we have the effect that i had similar here in my houdini scene and again, we can just play around here with the values to create the effect you're looking for. You can also, from this point, easily go back and forward. So if you think that these shapes are too thick, they should be more thinner. Then we can go here in Houdini. We can, for example, instantly take the overall thickness over here and make them way thinner. And you can instantly export this go back here and now they are a little bit thinner what we can also do here we can start playing also around with the vertex so set this to gradient and click save and we instantly see then a new result which is this which is following a gradient along the lines so this is also a cool result as well so you can do a lot of cool things with one tool to create some lightning effects on the model and you can also just copy this and then rotate a bit and now I have this effect going on so at this stage you just play around with the effect and going back and forward between Houdini and Unity and then you can get interesting variations and so on so that was it for the lightning part so now let's move on to these fog effects. So what we first of all need is a is a texture of a smoke. And we can do that in a few ways. So by default, there is actually a procedural smoke tool in labs. So we can here click on place this node. And then we have some smokes. Then we can here play around with some of the values to create a smoke shape you're looking for. I quickly here looked up my smoke texture and this is what I generated with this tool. So this is a quick way of doing this because it's already built a node and we can just instantly see the result. There are of course other ways you can do it but I, I decided to use the tools we have and then use this one now also I cheated a little bit for creating this is that I also just went in the front view and just took a screenshot from this fog so I don't have to render it and so on but you can render this out if you want a higher quality version there are there are also more ways of creating cloud shapes and smokes in Houdini like by default there are some interesting 
shelf tools like cloud effects like you can create a whole cloud system if you want it there are also here some uh, simple effects like some more smoke effects going on but these are more for animations and so on but if you want to create a, a sprite sheet we can then simulate something in houdini and can make it into a sprite sheet so this is the result i like and i would like to have that so you can take screenshots and then here i opened it in substance designer and i'm going to use and i'm going to use a merge alpha and i will use here a grayscale conversion and use this in the alpha channel so i have this result so also let's remove the alpha for a moment and i would like to filter out some of the black values so in the levels node we can grab here this part and we can then filter out these darker values so this is then ready and by default my resolution here is 1k so that's quite high for one smoke texture so we can maybe lower it to maybe this uh, maybe the 200 and then we can just here click the save icon to save this current image and then we can use this in unity so now we have our texture and we can then use this here in a material or in a shader and material and the next step is then creating this model so i've made a small tool for this so here i've made a small tool for this where we can draw a line and a shape is sweeped on this line so this tool is pretty simple in setup so if you're if you already followed a couple of tutorials this is nothing new so the way how this tool is built is start out with a line then i resampled the line so we have multiple points here then i do a face node which will clean up the line so if i would enable the points we can see that in here in this part the points have been removed then i will be selecting end and begin points and these will then be colored in a gradient so you can see that this part and this part has a black value because we have a small gradient then i smooth out this gradient so why do we have this gradient this gradient is used for the beginning and the end of my material so if my smoke moves when it comes to the end it will slowly fade out if i go here in unity we can see that at the at the end you can see that it slowly fades out you cannot really see it a lot but you can see that there is some fading so then i use the new sweep node and in the sweep node i sweep this shape which is a line and i duplicate this line to have this shape and in the sweep node of course we use the new automatic unwrapping so we don't have to deal with uvs so my uvs are looking like this and you can also decide to reverse this shape if you want to so this is not the most complex tool that there is but it's nice to have to make some custom shapes for your particles and now let's make a material for this so i'm gonna right click create shader and let's take the unlit graph smoke falling so when you open this we have this and change some properties um i want transparency and you can set it to additive so load in our texture and we can use this texture then in our material so we could use the alpha and the color and save this and we're going to create already a material to see what it's looking first look of the shader and make sure it's set to transparency and you can also use double sided set the first step now let's bring in some motion 
and the way we can do that is by using a tiling and offset node and we also need to bring in time to actually move what's to, to actually move it so the time is actually just a float and in here we have an x and y value so i want to change the y value so to connect this if you would connect this now they would be both moving in x and y so i will use a combine node and i would like to move on y axis so i will fill in the, this here connect this connect this here in the uv and we can see it's moving now and click save and now it's moving maybe it's moving in the wrong direction maybe i want to move them to the other side so i'm gonna use a multiply here and i will fill in also here a factor called speed and we can control the speed and outside our shader graph and now we have here a speed so i can go minus now then we also had the vertex color that i talked about and let's load in the vertex color so the beginning and the end have some vertex information and i want to multiply this value so here and here let's save this and let's see if this makes any changes and as predicted we can see here that it's fading out the result so it's not that harsh anymore you could also bring in a multiplier in here so multiply So in here we can control some parts and you can see that if I go too extreme some values are getting weird. That's because I didn't clamp it back to a 0 to 1 range. So that might be useful to clamp the values just to be sure that we are staying in the 0 to 1 range. One more thing I also did it to make it interesting is I used this texture twice, one that is going fast and one that is going slow. So let's move this up here. And let's say this is my faster one. And I'm basically going to copy paste the system. So Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And fill that in here. Make some space. Like this. So what we did here, we took our current time and make it twice as fast. So this is, as you can see here, it's going faster. Or you can just make it go slower if you want to. Like if you put 0.5 in it, it will go way slower than the other one. Then we only need to combine these results. We can use an add node. Add this value and right now they also are the same intensity so maybe what if I multiply here with a low value like this so we have some variation there in the color so they're not both the same intensity maybe let's place this in color here as well and I'm gonna press save and let's see how this looks so it's a bit subtle, so maybe increase this. I think I need to make some more tweaks to get it better. Yeah, so in here I made some more tweaks to make it a bit more on what I would like to have. So I made some tweaks and what I did is I removed the multiply here from the vertex and placed it here. And then after that you're doing a clamp. Then also I made a parameter for the tiling, just so we can play around a bit with the tiling and stretch it maybe if you want to. So those are some tweaks. And as you can see, that looks a bit better. So it's slowly moving fork down and we can increase the speed. 
Also here I have the tiling set. So we can play around with some of these values to get different results. What we can also do is just play around with the model and we can, for example, just like this, stretch it and then just tweak the shader. So we have like now a bigger area of smoke coming down. And this is how I did the smoke. So I had the shader and the setup. So I can take this digital asset, place it where I want to. Like here on the back, for example, I can place it here. And I can go here and edit curve mode and place around this curve to get the effect you want to. You can also play around more with the shader, improve it more to get the version you would like to have. But you can see it's easy to then make a curve that follows your shape to get the perfect fit for your environment. So that's how the smoke is done. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.